Judy Binney from Willow Springs Creative Center and welcome to the For the Love of Birds workshop. You've received your kit from the city and we're going to go through the kit and make a whole series of different edible ornaments for the birds so that you can take them outside and decorate a tree and then watch all the birds come to enjoy. So to prepare for the workshop you will need a bowl a metal tablespoon or soup spoon is excellent. If you do have a needle nose pliers, some type of pliers, that would be excellent because we will be working with a lot of wire. And two eggs. We've also put this tray down. If you have a nice workstation, you'll need some space. And then maybe put down a plastic tablecloth or a garbage bag or a big cookie sheet like this to work on. So now that you've taken all of your items out of your kit, we'd like you to arrange them in the order that we're going to be using them. So you can see on all the paper bags, there are numbers, and then there are things that you can see. They aren't numbered, but we'll tell you where to put them. So for number one, we're going to be doing a seed hanging ornament. And for that, you're going to need this little bag that says one and two, the little tin foil pan, this wire that is with this bag, number one. For number two, you have a, a bag all by itself and that's for doing pine cone ornaments. And then for number three, we're going to do some nice shape ornaments to hang. You'll be needing this little pack that has the fresh cranberries with the wire and you'll also need your popcorn and please note don't eat any of some of this looks tempting to eat but don't eat any of it we'll move on to number four you will have a wreath it could be uh, there's all different sizes of wreaths that you have you'll have some jute and you'll have some wire wrapped on the wreath and you'll also have two little bags. One has, has beautiful homemade bread uh, cubes in it, dried apples, and then there's a bag of cranberries, raisins, and prunes. You can see these are all things that birds love to eat. And then our last uh, activity will be a nice little long garland strand, and you will need this wire for it. And then you'll be using the leftovers from all of these other activities to complete the fifth activity. So we're going to start with our number one activity. We're going to do this nice heavy seed hanging ornament. And this is what yours will turn out to look like. But I just want you to know you could do it in different shapes and different containers. You could use a muffin tin or this is done in a little terracotta pot to give you more of a bell look. So in your kit you'll have the tin foil pan and in this little bag that says number one and two there is a little bag and this is a bit mucky but birds need fat and this is a combination of shortening and bacon fat. What you're going to do is just reach in and you're going to grease the inside of your pan. While someone's doing that, maybe there's an adult or someone who knows about using the stove and the oven and they can go and preheat the oven to 250 degrees. Okay, so I've greased the inside of the pan and then I'm going to just set this aside because we will need it for the next activity, number two. Then I'm going to take my bowl and my spoon and then I have this one bag that is labeled, labeled number one and in here is a mixture of bird seed. It's actually got millet, corn, wheat, and oats and we've added bran to it and you're going to pour that into your bowl and you're going to just 
stir that up. Then you have your two eggs, and you're gonna just crack them right into the right into your bowl. And then just using your spoon, you're gonna stir it up. Make sure you really stir it well so it all gets wet. It should be pretty gooey. Just let that sit for a bit once it's all stirred up and then you should have a wire you want to straighten the wire out throughout this kit there's wire and I just want to just warn you to be careful because the wire is quite pokey on the ends okay so if you have a, a needle nose pliers you can use it to get your spiral started and you're gonna just turn it. This wire is pliable enough to do it just by your hand if you don't have a pliers. Okay? And you can just, it doesn't need to look perfect. You're just looking for a nice spiral. And this is gonna be baked right into the pan. So when you get to about here, we do need that tail for hanging it. We want it to come out the, of, out of the middle. So we're just gonna pull it over and make that come straight up the middle. All right, so that's what it looks like. So to begin with then, to make the ornament, you're gonna just put a, a thin layer of your seed mixture on down into the bottom of the pan and you're gonna push it down nice and firmly with your spoon. Then you're gonna take your hanger and set it in there. Okay. Then you're just gonna to top it up with the rest of the mixture. If there is a bit excess, you might wanna find some other little baking pan that you could put it in to cook, to bake it up in. You want to push this down really nice and firmly. Okay, you don't want to leave air pockets or it'll, it won't hold together. I'm going to just make sure I got it right full. Great. And then some, you want to put this on a lower level in your oven. And I would bend this over, this wire over, so you don't catch the top rack or anything when you put it in. And we're just gonna put it in the middle. If you wanna put it on a cookie sheet, you could, but it's fine to just sit it like that. And then set your timer for 30 minutes. On activity number two, pine cone ornaments. Find it. A plate, three beautiful pine cones, some nice wool and a bag. You're gonna need from your first activity the bag that has a beautiful amount of shortening and bacon fat. And if you want to just open it up, you're gonna take your little bag. And this has got black oil bird seeds and black striped uh, sunflower seeds, sorry. Okay, so you'll have those. You can just untie those, the wool, and you should have three different strands. So to make this ornament, and these, once you make them and you hang them, the birds and the squirrels probably will come very quickly and then once they're all cleaned off of fat and seeds you can just take them down and bring them in the house and just redo them so you're going to the end of the pine cone you're going to take your wool and you're going to like find the, about the center of your wool and you're going to put it under all those little i'm not really sure what those are called on a pine cone those little 
all the little pieces. <laughs> anyway, and then you're gonna tie a knot. And now I would tie a double knot. Everything that's outside in the weather, you need things to be secure. And then you'll have these two long tails and then you can just bring them together and tie a knot in them. you're going to do is you'll take your pine cone and you'll just stick it into your fat like you pull the bag open you don't want because you want enough for all three like I would think this is a bit too thick so I might spread it with my fingers okay and then once you have like that then you're just going to go into your seeds down. You can use other types of bird seed as well, the wild bird seed mix, but just from experience I know the sunflower seeds are the bird's favorite. And then you have one of your pine cones done. And then you can repeat with the other two. number three we're gonna make some awesome shape uh, ornaments using fresh cranberries popcorn and everyone's favorite cereal okay so you should have three pieces of wire so you can make three different ornaments um, this is called I'm gonna go on top of here so you can see you're gonna leave a tail like this on your wire and then fold it up and then you'll have the rest of the wire. You'll use, get your, cranberry, your fresh cranberries out. Some of them might be a little bit uh, mushy because they are fresh but just get them on there and once they go outside and they'll freeze up and, and the birds will be able to just peck at them. Okay and so you're going to just feed the cranberries and popcorn. When you're working with the popcorn, you want to go through this fat part of the popcorn that's just all the white part, not that inner kernel part. Your, the wire won't stick through, that won't poke through there. You have to also be gentle that you don't push too hard on the popcorn or it will break. But we gave you lots, so you should be able to. You'll have enough to do. Want to keep you can see in my wire I've got a little bit of a dent a bend in it you want to make sure you straighten it the wire out totally so that the things will just slip right on okay. so you can decide if you want to do a pattern you might want to do some cereal with it as well You'll just keep working along good so good so now I'm just at the end I'm gonna put on my last popcorn and I've left a little bit of the wire and I'm gonna bring it over to where that tail was going up and I'm going to wrap it around and I want to wrap it around a few times be careful of the little end of the wire it can be very pokey and Use my needle and those pliers just to bend it over just so no one gets hurt when they're touching it. Okay, and then you can leave it as like a circle if you'd like, like our little wreath, or if you want to make it heart shaped to show the birds some love, just pull, push down and you'll get a nice heart shape. Then up on the top part, you're going to just take it and you're going to form. A hook and it's ready for hanging okay so here's a cereal one and I, again I've left a little bit of wire and I'm just going to wrap it around at the top got to be careful with this cereal it likes to crumble and then I'm gonna leave this one as a circle just 
a nice little wreath and then put the hook on. So we're moving on to our fourth activity, which is a nice little hanging edible mobile. So in your kit, you'll have a wreath and wrapped around it will be four pieces of wire. Have two pieces of jute that are just gently tied together and you can untie them. And then you'll have a bag. And you can open that up and put it out on your, on your station. It's filled with bread and more cereal. And then in this next bag, we have some nice dehydrated apple. And then you'll have a bag, a little baggie, that is filled with dried cranberries, raisins, and cut up bits of prune. These are all high, they have lots, lots of calories in them. And that's what the birds need. They need that energy, especially now that the weather has got cold again. So to begin, you're gonna take your two pieces of jute and your little wreath, and there's all different sizes of wreaths. So I'm using this small one. You might have a larger one. So it's all the same, just different sizes. You're going to find the center of your jute and at the top, you're going to twist them both together and make a hanging loop at the top. Okay, just like that. Then you're gonna take the, the four strands and just like on a compass, north, south, east, and west, you're going to tie the pieces of jute on. And again, double knot it Make sure you pull tight. You want to try to keep the hanging piece up in the center when you go to tie the next one. You want to try to make sure you tie it so that this string will be the same and this next one will be the same length as the first one that you tied. So now I'm doing the third one. I divided it into quarters. T tying a double knot again, pulling tight, and checking to see that it is a good length and it is very short. I've got to loosen that one off. You'll notice right away if it's not the right length and you need it a similar length so that you can uh, let it hang. And so now I've tied it on in the four different corners. If a circle has a corner, just divided it into quarters. And then I'm going to take these four wires that I have. Again, I'm trying to, if they've been bent, try to smooth them out as smooth as you can. And on the bottom, you can use your needle nose or just your finger. You're going to make a little, a little curl in the wire like that. And that's going to hold all of your, your good food for the birds on. And then we're going to just start loading up the little wire with, with food. So you can have the popcorn. There's, this is the prunes. With the bread, it's pretty dry, so you just need to wiggle the wire and just keep twisting it back and forth. And then finally, you'll get through the piece of bread. It takes a little bit of patience. Sometimes you might want to just say, oh, I'll try a different one. <laughs> so to put the bread on, because the, we've dried the bread, um, what, if you look right at the bottom of your bag in your kit, you'll find a little piece of wire and you can use that to poke, pre-poke a hole through the bread, okay? And then you can feed it easily onto your wire. 
You can try without doing that first, but we just find the bread is pretty tough. Okay. So then just keep beating it all on, mixing it up. Once again, you, if you like patterns, you can do a pattern. If you just want to do all bread, you can do that. If you have any uh, uh, shortening or bacon fat left in your bag, you can also rub some of the bread into the fat to use it up and birds will love that. So once I get my piece so that I'm up close to the end, but I have about two centimeters of wire left. Cranberries. Oh, that cranberry just doesn't want to stay on. Then I'm going to go under where, right beside where one of the, the jute is tied on, and I'm going to just slip the wire underneath, and I'm going to bend it back and twist it around the wire, so then I have the, the piece hanging down. And then I'm going to continue and do all four until, and attach them until I have the four pieces hanging down. And then I can take that also outside to hang in the tree. So our timer has gone off. So let's just check out our, let's make sure you put on an oven mitt and really be careful of the wire. The wire will be very hot and you're, you can feel it. And it'll have a little bit of, it'll be a bit spongy but it will feel quite dry. And when you touch it, the seeds shouldn't break off and fall off. It's ready now to come out and just cool. So make sure you turn off your oven. He is making some garlands to hang in the tree. There's loops on either side. So in the bottom of your bag, you should have wrapped together two pieces of longer wire. You just open them up. Once again, you want to smooth them out so they, they don't have a lot of pinks in them. On the one end, you're going to make a, a little loop. You want it big enough that it could fit over a little twig end on a tree. And then you're going to just start using all your leftovers that you have in your kit. Your bread, you might have a cranberry or two left. You should have a bunch of popcorn left and some, maybe some cereal. And you're gonna just sit. This is a good time to also pour yourself a cup of hot chocolate and just Share stories about the birds. My friend Roxana, who has been filming this with me, was just saying that she had heard about whiskey jacks and how climate change is affecting them in that they would store their food under the bark of trees and it would stay nice and cool and uh, probably frozen a bit for a while. But because of climate change, their food is actually not staying cold enough, so it's rotting and they're really struggling. So even more important to, to feed the birds and take care of the environment. So to go back to our first activity, you should have let it sit and cool until it, you can touch it, the wire is cool. You're gonna straighten the wire up now and you're gonna gently, just gently work it till you can slide it out of the cup. Again, this still might be a bit soft, but it will harden up once you get it outside. You have a ribbon in your kit and you can just take that and tie it on. We just wanna make everything look very festive and early Valentine's Day for the birds. You can tie your little bow on and then it's this nice wire. It's very flexible. It's, it's very uh, 
sturdy, but it also bends easily. You can make a nice hook and take this out to hang it up for the birds. What, what we'd love you to do at Willow Springs is to take out all your ornaments and if you make up a few more, take them out and decorate a tree. So if you could take a photograph of your decorated tree and especially if there's birds on it and send it to willowsprings at tbaytel.net. So I'm ready to hang the decorations in a tree. You can see I live out in Kaministiqua in the woods and I'm choosing a tree that's quite sheltered with other trees around it. That way the birds will feel secure in coming to get the food. If you're in the city, you want to choose a spot in your yard where maybe there is a bit of shelter. I usually feed the birds just on the ground and in the morning they're very happy. They come, uh, I usually get around maybe five dozen different uh, birds. Pine grosbeaks, chickadees, nuthatches, blue jays, whiskey jacks, the odd downy or hairy woodpecker, some pine siskins. It's very easy to access more information about local birds. Just Google it. There's lots of great books. Thanks so much for taking part in our edible bird ornament kit. Hope that you've enjoyed doing the activities. And just once they're eaten, just take them back in and reload them and rehang them. Days like this, it's really important to help our feathered friends along and feed the birds.